Good evening, everyone. The Gladstone Braves were 2-3 and three in the Great Northern Conference last season, 3-6 and six overall. The two conference wins were over Sault Ste. Marie and Marquette. But after being the smallest team in the GNC in terms of an enrollment for many years, the Braves have changed leagues. Gladstone enters the New Peninsula Conference, taking over the portion of the schedule that was filled by Norway, then Knights left to join the Mid-Eastern Conference. The Braves already play Gwent and Nagani on a regular basis, so Gladstone knows what the MPC offers. Players are excited to see some new teams. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot of good competition, and uh, we're going to hopefully win the conference. That's one of our team goals. It's going to be a lot of uh, new competition. It's going to be a great experience. Some new challenges for sure. You think some teams might uh, be overlook you a little bit? Oh, definitely. Probably, you know, I don't think we're going into their conference because we're weaker, but we're going to show them that we're tough. I like it. I mean, they don't know what they're in for. They see us coming in, they think we're new kids. It'll be a pushover, but they got another thing coming. Ooh, those are fighting words. The Braves open at Gwynn Friday, August 25th. The Braves have won three of the five matchups with the Model Towners, but Gwynn came out on top last season, 36-16. The Marquette Redmen are looking to improve on a frustrating 2016 season. One source of good news, more players on the varsity, three dozen as opposed to about two dozen a season ago. Break. Done. Why am I getting run over on trap? <laughs> more players doesn't mean assistant coach Jim Iwanek. He will be shy in getting this point through to his defense and they figured it out on this next play. The Redmen received bad news when starting quarterback Jackson Ostrowski and younger brother Joe transferred to Mount Pleasant. This was after their dad Chris Ostrowski became Central Michigan University's offensive coordinator after not having his contract renewed at NMU as head coach. That changes a few things, but coach Dave LaHillier says the two junior quarterbacks he has don't need to be heroes, just get the job done efficiently. They don't have to make plays on every single play. You know, we have our tailback, Drew Gale, coming back, who ran for over 1,000 yards. We have a uh, receiver, uh, Ethan Marsh, coming into his junior year. And we've got an offensive lineman that's returning. So those guys are going to help carry. It's not all on one person. It's our whole offense that has to uh, pick up the slack. We have a lot of returning um, kids this year for both defense and offense. So that's nice. It uh, doesn't take too long to get in the rhythm of things. Also some size on the O-line, which is really nice to see. Get there, get there. The Redmen have four of their five first games on the road, starting with a trip to Traverse City St. Francis on Friday, August 25th, followed by a Friday, September 1st game at home against Traverse City Central. The son of a former Michigan Tech hockey player and son of a former Michigan Tech volleyball player is headed to Bahrain for the Boys Under-19 World Volleyball Championship starting Friday. Parker Mickish is the son of Jeff Mickish and Krista Valdivia. Parker will be the libero for Team USA. Team USA has been training for the past two weeks at the U.S. Olympic Training Center at Lake Placid, New York. Mickish is, I hate to say it, by far the shortest player on the team at 5'11". He lives in Xenia, Ohio. The tallest USA player is 6'10", middle blocker Samuel Lewis of Southern California. Team USA begins pool play Friday against the host Bahrain, followed by a one match per day against Puerto Rico, Tunisia, and Egypt.